So I was getting ready to do a video today and as I usually do first thing in the morning is I sometimes I watch other YouTubers videos and one of the YouTubers, uh, Rhett Scholl, actually had a pretty good question from one of his subscribers and that was he had a pretty good understanding of the fretboard, knew his scales, knew his uh, triads up and down the neck, but his complaint was that when he would go to do a solo and improvise that he often had trouble coming up with stuff that he would just kind of get like brain freeze and and not being able to to improvise and so his question was how do i get better at improvising of course it helps to to know your scales. It helps to know the chord patterns and shapes up and down the neck. You know, Rhett gave him the answer of, well, you know, it just takes practice. It takes time. It takes learning other solos and trying to, to, to glean what you can out of what other people have already done. Yes, it's going to take practice. And yes, it helps to play along with songs on the radio or uh, you know stuff that you like or maybe solos that you've learned to go back and revisit and maybe try to do a little bit differently But really to get good at improvising you just have to play over different chord changes And so to do this you need to be able to have some kind of backing track now and there's tons of backing tracks uh, all over the internet that you can pull up something in a certain key and then just start simply and kind of build your uh, trick bag of chops to be able to put together things on the fly to, to actually improvise because really playing music is just like speaking you learn the alphabet you learn how they're put together in words you learn how sentences are formed but eventually you pick up that language so that you don't have to stop and think about every last thing that you're gonna say it just comes out and that's what you're going for when you're learning how to improvise and just come up with solos and things on the fly. You want to get to the point where you're not having to think about it as much. It's almost like a Zen state where you kind of get into the groove of the song. And a lot of the great players, a lot of the great session players, they get callbacks for work because they're really good at coming up with parts on the fly. They can run through it a couple of times and they kind of get an idea for what serves the song and that's something else I'll talk about as well. So today I'm going to show you a couple of things and the first thing um, I'm using a Loop Station RC2 that I'm be, going to be using to put together a background track and I've already done that with a couple of different sounds just to kind of uh, make it simple but I'll, I'll illustrate how I did that towards the end of the video and I'm also using a Boss GT8. Now I'm going to do a video on this because this falls under the dirt cheap guitar umbrella. Uh, the GT8 to me is still a usable tool. Um, I bought this one used for I want to say $75. Now I had to drive an hour or so to meet the person to buy it. You know it's seen better days but it works great and I still use it as a fly rig or you know convenience if I don't want to have to carry a bunch of gear with me. So let's get started. So first of all, um, I'm using my um, 1986, 80, 85, 86, 87, somewhere in there, uh, Kramer Pacer. This one is almost entirely original except I have uh, upgraded the pickup in it a little bit. Um, I'm actually using one of the Seymour Duncan uh, JBs in here now. And uh, this is the sound I have called up. A little bit of over-the-top distortion, but it it kind of works well for what I'll be I'll be demoing. And I'll have to adjust the sound a little bit here, make it easier to hear myself. So uh, the reason I did that is it's very compressed sound, so it, it it'll work well when I'm recording. So all I have is a basic uh, blues progression in. Um, in A. So this is straight up dad rock stuff that you would hear in a bar band. And so I'll start the loop and uh, just give you an idea of what it sounds like and then I'll talk about what I'm thinking about when I'm playing. So this is what it sounds like. Okay, so very straightforward. 
Um, of course, it's an A. Uh, I'm playing an A uh, riff. And the cool thing about doing stuff like this uh, is it's not major or minor. So I could use a minor pentatonic or a major pentatonic. So I could shift the sound of the, the groove in the song just by switching back and forth. But I'm going to show you how that uh, as you evolve as a player and um, start learning more exotic scales, how you can create a lot of spark and interest with your, your improvisations. So I'm going to start and I'm just going to play some really basic stuff to start with. And you'll notice that I tend to hang around certain notes. Those will be the root notes of the chord I happen to be playing over. So um, if I'm playing over an A, that's my home base. That's where I know I can go back to. So. So um, the only drawback to the, the, the single pedal uh, loopers is that you have to double click it to stop. And um, I, I do have an external pedal that I can use to control it, but I just don't have it set up right now. So uh, sometimes um, it can get a little bit hairy if you're trying to use it live. So what I was doing there was just hanging around the A and then playing riffs out of that minor pentatonic. And I've got a video on how to play that minor pentatonic. If you want to go and take a look at it, it's, it's a basic shape. And that's the great thing about the guitar is that it's uh, pattern based. So if I need to switch to a G, I can just move it around. So um, when I'm playing that, I know that, oh, I'm going back to my roots. When it changed up to the D, that's where I could either stay in the A minor pentatonic or do the D minor pentatonic, which shares a lot of the same notes. So they still work together. Um, and then of course it goes to E and then you know you kind of shift with the changes in uh, the chord changes. So now what I'm gonna do is um, play with the dynamics. So I can create interest in the parts that I'm playing by playing quieter, playing slower, and then build the dynamic by getting louder or playing faster. So, Okay, so there, you know, I started simple. I started building complexity. I started uh, taking the pitches, high, pitches higher up, uh, bending the notes more, all that kind of stuff, adding vibrato, uh, throwing in an, uh, a boost to boost the signal louder. Uh, and that's typically how these things are going. Now, I'm still in the minor pentatonic. I have not changed out of those five notes. The only things I've done is I've added a little, uh, like out of the blues, the note out of the blues scale and a couple of other little things because that's what I'm going to be building to is because you can then, if you want to take it a step further, start working with uh, 
chords like the Dorian mode and being able to add notes to give you more color. So let me show you what that'll sound like. So there I added a few notes out of the Dorian mode and you could see that it kind of changed uh, the, the sound that, that I was getting out of it. You could do the same thing by going into the, the straight minor scale, playing something like that as opposed to just the, just the pentaton. And you can hit those notes. Because when it goes to the E chord, you can hit that note straight out of the minor. Which is also in the pentatonic, but I'm playing the note right next to it as well. And all that kind of just adds momentum to whatever you're doing. Another thing I've got to talk about is, like I mentioned earlier, playing to the song. Now, if you're playing just some, you know, basic dad rock blues track like this, you can kind of push the envelope and add different modes and colors to kind of make it more interesting, but it still needs to kind of stay in the lane, so to speak, of, oh, we're playing a blues tune. I'm not gonna get in here and start doing uh, picking sweeps and, and all kinds of legato phrases and things like that just because it, that really doesn't fit the song. Now, if I was doing progressive metal or doing some kind of uh, shred tune or anything, yeah, that would, that would work. I mean, that's kind of what you expect out of the song. When you're playing to something like this, think more Stevie Ray Vaughan and less Steve Vai, even though they're both excellent players and you can kind of take bits and pieces of both and mash them together and get very interesting things. You don't want it to overplay the song. And so let me give you an example of that. So there's kind of just fooling around, but still I was staying within the pentatonic, but I was adding a lot of whammy, I was adding a lot of uh, slurs and things like that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it might be fun and everything to do, or if you're you know doing some sort of gig and uh, the audience is just kind of half asleep or something, that might be something to kind of wake them up or what have you. But if I was going into the studio to record a tune and backing up a band, that solo might not might not really fit what's actually happening in the greater context of the song. So that's why, you know, when people say, oh, they're, they're playing with taste, uh, that's what they mean. I mean, a lot of the guys that, that um, you know, are truly the great players, yeah, they can fly up and down the fretboard. But what's really impressive is not so much what they play, but what they don't play and how they know how to lay back and kind of uh, fit within, within what they're doing with the song. So an exception to using the whammy bar in blues is Jeff Beck. He is able to add a lot of interest to the phrases that he's playing, but he's not, you know, sitting there and just flailing away on it. You don't hear that. It's a much more tasteful kind of feel to it. So there I was really barely touching the bar up and down, but it got a lot more expressive with, with what I was doing. Again, 
I'm still in the minor pentatonic. I'm not doing anything out of the box, so to speak, except for maybe joining different forms together where I'm... I'm not really, you know, doing anything too far out of left field. And you'll notice that I'm, I know where my roots are. If you go back and watch my video on the fret light, uh, that was one of the, the things that I had an issue with was that it did not show you uh, where your roots were. So all the lights were the same color, so you would know the pattern for a scale, but it's so important to know where the roots are because really there are no wrong notes, especially if you're playing jazz. Uh, if you hit a note that is completely outside of what you're doing, you're only a half step away from where you need to be. So another important thing with improvisation is knowing how to cover your mistakes. So let me give you an example. So there I purposely threw in notes that were completely out of the scale, but by bending up, sliding to the correct note, whether that's up or down, um, maybe giving expressive vibrato, there's different ways that you can kind of make those notes uh, work kind of like adding some tension and, and release. That's why things stay interesting is that you're adding tension and release to what you're playing. So if you create if you hit something that's um, a totally wrong note, it makes the listener perk up and say, well, wait a minute, what's going on there? But then you resolve to the correct note, all of a sudden it sounds better. So let me show you how I put together um, this kind of rhythm. First of all, with the, let me go and do a new, we're gonna start with a new pattern here and I wanna pick a pattern that I like something with a shuffle to it okay now I'm going to set the tempo so it's got a swing feel to it and when I start, I'm going to start with, um, let me switch sounds here, just a different sound. And I'm just going to play some straight chords like that. So let me get the looper started to record. Let's try that again. Okay. So we got a shuffle beat going. I'm gonna hit the pedal and then it's going to basically start recording when it comes around to the top of the, the uh, drum loop there. So I'll kind of get a feel for what I'm gonna do. Okay, so it's gonna be a little bit different, 
but uh, we'll start with like uh, an A minor seven. I'm gonna stay in the minor pentatonic range, so let's see how it works. Okay. Okay, so now what I want to do is pull up um, a bass line. So, so let me pull up a sound. Okay. Okay, so now we have the basic track kind of built and I'll switch back to the sound that I was using and you'll notice that in there I threw in a wrong chord because I played a um, seven instead of a minor seven. So when you have little happy accidents like that, uh, you have to know that that's coming up and know that um, the minor pentatonic will not work over it, but if you just hit the root, it's all good, as long as you're not playing anything that contrasts with it. So let's see what we can come up with here.
Okay, so in that one, you'll see I kind of messed around a little bit and tried different things. Some things sounded good and some things sounded like complete crap. And that's what's going to happen when you're learning to improvise. But if you kind of stick with it, uh, you know, you can have a lot of fun just kind of coming up with different things. Um, it's going to help improve, you know, your ear so that you know what sounds good. It's going to help improve your timing and your rhythm just to be playing over different things. So, you know, find some of the backing tracks online. There's tons of books out there that have uh, not only good backing tracks but tips on how to uh, play over the changes so to speak so that when you're uh, playing over different types of chords you know what scales work better over different chords everything that I've shown here has been 85 to 90 percent pentatonic scale I've thrown in some other uh, types of scales like the Dorian mode uh, for color but I'm not really doing anything too uh, too far out there so by all means get a setup play around with it uh, it's a good way to practice uh, a lot of the apps these days have ways to record yourself and loop so that you can record a little something and play back over it and and every minute that you spend doing that is is going to just improve your playing that much more so if you like this video be sure and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon give that video a like because it does help uh, grow the channel not that uh, there's money falling from heaven but every little bit helps if you have any suggestions for videos or content i'm working on some right now that different uh, subscribers have kind of suggested by all means leave something in the comment send me a message and uh you know if if you like what i'm doing here tell a friend about the channel uh, i'm going to be doing all kinds of different things you know really kind of whatever comes to mind and kind of sharing with you uh, all the experience that i have and things that i've learned and things that i'm still learning as i go so remember until next time keep practicing <laughs>